Hi, and welcome to Leap, a podcast series by Startup Lifers. The goal with this podcast is to have a warm and cozy conversation together with our wonderful alumni who share their life-changing experiences from working at some of the most exciting startups in the world. You'll hear real life stories from those who've made it, how the experience changed their life and where they are today. Startup Lifers is a non-profit organization connecting emerging Nordic talent with the most exciting startup jobs. I'm your host, Paulina Alanen, and today I have the pleasure to be here with Startup Lifers alumni, Kate Dorr. Let's hear Kate's story with Startup Lifers living in San Francisco and what brought her back to Finland after working for two different companies in the US as a software developer. Welcome to the show, Kate. Hi, Paulina. Thank you very much for having me. Nice to be here. Great. So let's get right into it and hear Kate's story with Startup Lifers living in San Francisco and how she ended up staying in Finland after uh, working for two different companies in the US. So could we start by a quick introduction? So tell us who you are and what do you do now? Okay, so my name is Kate again, and I'm working currently as a software generalist at Zen Robotics. I started a couple of weeks ago. Okay, um, so you're our first guest in this podcast who is not originally from Finland. So uh, where are you originally from and how many years have you been living here in Finland? I'm originally from Russia, St. Petersburg. I came to Finland in 2011 and stayed here for seven years. Did my bachelor's, started my master's, and then moved to states for a couple of years. And now I'm just recently back again. Uh, came back in March, planning to stay here. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, so you spent quite some time in the states. Usually, our alumni spend from maybe 12 to 18 months but you were there for two years so that's that's a bit different and we will we will hear a bit more about the companies where you were um so uh, could you tell us a little bit about um where you worked while you were in the states with startup lifers so perhaps the company name and size and what the company was all about sure so, yeah i was happy to work for two different companies First, I got into a small startup of six people. Um, the company's name is Crowdmade, and they are helping influencers to monetize uh, with the help of e-commerce. So building a platform for automating um, e-commerce, starting from orders to logistics to customer support and such. Uh, and then uh, after... Eight months working for that company, I joined Mesh Gym, um, a little bit bigger, 20 people uh, startup. Uh, they are building machine vision powered self checkout kiosks. So they are worked for a whole year. Uh, machine vision powered self checkout kiosks. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? So, what, what does that exactly mean? Yeah, it's a bit loaded, I know. So, what they do. Um, is so the self checkout kiosk is basically a box uh, packed with cameras and trained to recognize objects. They are spread all around the country, United States, and uh, mainly they are helping people to speed up their checkout process in cafeterias, a lot in corporate cafeterias, for example, also stadiums, hospitals, schools, and so on. Okay, and it works with machine vision. So basically, you wouldn't have to get your wallet and and some nice card or coins out of there, but you would just go to the self checkout and and be done with that. Yeah, so it's pretty similar to what we have in stores now, except for it doesn't need barcodes. Uh, it can be um, pastry on a plate, or soup, or anything you want, um, and. Yeah, it's it's one second recognition, then you tap your card and go. So now it's touchless and it's pretty convenient. Okay. And were you a software developer in both of these companies? Yeah, in both of the companies I worked as a software developer developing mainly web tools 
So you had been uh, studying a bachelor's degree in Haagahelia and then switched to Aalto University to do your master's. How did you hear about Startup Lifers and when did you decide to apply? Startup Lifers were advertising pretty much everywhere on Aalto campus and also a lot on social media, so it was pretty hard not to notice. Um, and since I was, uh, I also did a travel to to the Silicon Valley with a different student club a year before, I decided that I should probably try applying and I was lucky enough to get a job in spring 2018. Okay, and you got the job during the spring. When did you then move to California? I moved uh, early June 2018. Okay, so it took like a couple of months to arrange the visas and uh, move and everything. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a pretty standard process, takes about a couple of months. Yeah. So you said you worked as a software developer, uh, but you didn't have a computer science degree because you studied something else uh, in Haagahelia as your bachelor's. Uh, what was that, what you studied and how did you then learn to code? Yeah, my major was uh, international business, actually finance uh, focused, uh, but I actually was building websites quite early. I f- built my first one at the age of 12, and then uh, most of my jobs before I started actually as a software developer were in different web-related companies. So it was pretty natural for me to go into technical side more. And uh, when I got into Alto, I started taking all of the courses that I could on both bachelor's and master's level. And after that, I got a project work as a full-stack developer and then full-time job. And at that point, I realized that this is what I want to continue doing professionally in my life. Yeah, was your master's in Aalto also in the business school or in the technical side? Uh, it was originally in business too. Okay. Uh, nice that it all all worked out for you and you kind of found your path there that you could then continue in Silicon Valley. Yeah, Aalto is great in that sense uh, that it allows taking courses from all of the schools. That's the best part about it. Yeah. That's that's really great. So uh, many of our listeners are interested in the actual getting the job and the whole interviewing process. So um, could you describe it a little bit? How many rounds did you have? How was it to meet your team? And uh, did you manage to talk to your uh, peers before starting to actually work with them? So the first uh, interview was happening on video call with a CTO. Um, we did both technical and cultural fit questions within an hour or two. And after that, I was actually waiting to get some technical assignment or another round, but instead a week later I got an offer from them, uh, which is not very typical as far as I understand, but I was pretty lucky. Um, With the second company, we did two rounds. First one was just a short screening call. And then I came to their office for a four-hour on-site interview. It was a lot of whiteboard coding, one project that I had to do within an hour, basically build a a website. Uh, We talked with a bunch of my future co-workers about my goals and backgrounds and well you could call it cultural feed too yeah that that was about it okay so you switched jobs while you were living in san francisco and could you tell me a little bit more about that what happened with the first company my first contract was for half a year and the company could technically extend it for another half of the year um as an intern, it can be there for, for a full year. But uh, that startup had a pretty rough year and they only extended it for two months. So I was 
choosing between going back to Finland or trying again. And I talked with uh, lifers and they recommended me to apply once again. And I did. And I was, again, lucky enough to get another job. Okay, so your second job, you actually, again, got it through startup lifers, although you were at the time already living in San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting. Well, it's great that they could help you, <laughs> help you twice to land a job. Yeah. That's very nice. Um, okay, so you said that you had been to San Francisco before on a on a student group trip. So, tell me a little bit about how you then in 2018 moved to California. You knew something in advance since you had been there, but how did you find an apartment and a place to stay when you went there? So my search for an apartment lasted maybe a little bit longer than usual. Um, I was staying in an Airbnb in Lace Bay for about a month and a half before I found my place because I couldn't decide where exactly to leave because most of my friends, people I knew, the lifers and everyone uh, were in San Francisco, where, whereas I was working in the East Bay. So it was a choice. But then I finally settled on San Francisco and I found my first apartment through Facebook group, um, which there is a bunch. I just went to see the apartment and I liked the people living there and the rent was good. So we, I got the contract right away. Uh, then, since my next job was in Palo Alto, at some point I faced the problem of commuting for four hours a day to the South Bay on call train and so on, uh, which is pretty pretty tiring. So I decided to move south and I found an apartment or a room in the apartment in Sunnyvale, also through probably the same Facebook group um, and I moved there so I lived in Sunnyvale for almost a year or two until I left to live in Sunnyvale okay. you actually need a need a car so that was one of the one of the bottlenecks but I ended up getting a US driver's license and that was pretty comfortable after that so did you actually get a car yeah, yeah. I got a license and I got a car and um, I lived in Sunnyvale after that. But I was still commuting to San Francisco every weekend or or more often because most of the fun is still there. Right. Um, and just to re- remind our listeners about East Bay, so uh, basically where you're talking about Oakland and, and Berkeley when you said East Bay. Or where was so it exactly? F- originally, the East Bay was Fremont. Uh, then uh, San Francisco is, is the North Bay, technically. And then South Bay, where I lived uh, last, is uh, is the actual Silicon Valley. The Palo Alto, yeah. Mountain View, Sunnyvale, San Jose, and whatever else is included there. Yeah. Right. Uh, and both of these places where you lived, they were uh, shared flats, so you had housemates. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the first one was a wonderful, very old, I don't know how old, uh, Victorian house without an air conditioning uh, in uh, San Francisco downtown Soma area uh, with some homeless around and so on, but really wonderful roommates and uh, pretty convenient transportation if you don't have a car. And then the second place in Sunnyvale was a typical, uh, it's just a townhouse surrounded by a lot of green, very quiet, very clean and so on. But Sunnyvale, let me tell you, there's absolutely nothing going on. So if you are aiming to have some social life throughout the week, Maybe it's not a good choice for that. <laughs> yeah, but at least you could then commute to San Francisco or somewhere else during the weekends. 
Yeah, yeah. On the weekends, it's pretty fast. Uh, after work trips are a little bit long. It was taking me on Friday evenings an hour and a half to drive up to San Francisco because everyone wants to go there. <laughs> but yeah, on the weekends, it's probably like half an hour, 40 hour drive or an hour or so call train. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the commuting times in the Bay Area can sometimes be quite uh, challenging. Yeah, the public so transport is not what you are used to in Helsinki, for sure. It's much, much worse. <laughs> yeah, and also the distances are, are quite longer. True, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk about something else than just your uh, work life. Let's talk about some California highlights. Um, when you think back to your two years in California, uh, could you mention us here some of the best things about your life that you had there? Sure. So the first thing is people. Absolutely. It's very, very international and intellectually intense environment, which I love. Uh, also, since it's uh, very multicultural, the food is amazing and actually pretty cheap comparing to Helsinki again it might be even cheaper so I would go every week at least or several times a week for some dinners in Chinatowns with my friends and just have really really wonderful meals then then it's nature California's nature is something to experience as much as you can starting from the Golden Gate Park within the San Francisco which is like a little jungle in the city uh, and then anywhere you go outside the city there are hiking trails everywhere there are ocean views there are um, the national parks that are definitely a must see um, I also was since I, I've been doing sports before, um, with my co-workers in my last company, we decided to prepare for a triathlon. So it was one guy's idea. Later, it turned out that guy just learned to swim, uh, but uh, we still went for it. So for the whole summer last year, we were after work going either for a run or for a swim or for cycling. We cycled from Palo Alto to San Francisco, something like 50 kilometers uh, on a Friday night. And then again, hikes in the evening, you know, on, on the weekends. So yeah, it was beautiful. And then the triathlon itself was in Santa Cruz, which is a beautiful um, town on the, on the seashore. So if you are into sports at all, I highly recommend signing up for some race maybe not triathlon maybe um, a half marathon run or whatever run you take there are, there are a bunch of them also happening in san francisco for example so that was fun so was the triathlon the full distance we did the half olympic distance so it was our first try we decided to start slow and we actually plan to do the full triathlon in spring but you know what happened <laughs> but yeah there are also half ironmans and ironmans happening nearby the bay area so if you are into very intense sport um, workouts and so on you can do that too yeah that's very cool and yeah i agree with you on that that there are so many of these um intense people uh, both uh, intellectually but also sports wise that there are uh, a lot of things and a lot of competitions to take part in if you're interested in that yeah yeah people are very focused on their health that's kind of a big thing so what are the biggest things now that you're back in Finland and you reflect on the time that you spend in California the biggest skills that you brought back with you and to your current job at Zen Robotics? So I definitely learned a lot of new technical skills that highly depends on where you work and so on, but inevitably you learn a lot because of just how intense it is and how much you're expected to do 
every person in the company is actually expected to do. But besides that, I learned probably the main lesson that I've learned is to always be on top of the tasks and make sure to see the big picture. So don't wait for someone to write up the tickets and clarify them, but uh, proactively ask the questions and uh, try to define the priorities for yourself. Ask the co-workers what they are working on. Try to find some better ways of um, of writing code, of uh, maybe creating the architecture, maybe even creating new tools and uh, starting new projects. If you see that something is missing in the company, that's what the whole startup world is about. You're always uh, in charge of making it better and uh, making it better in the ways that are probably nobody even thought about just a few days before or would would thought without you coming up with this idea so um, be active and don't be afraid to talk to even if the person has a position of a cto ceo or whatever manager they are usually quite open to hearing new ideas uh, how to improve the existing infrastructure and maybe even some new business ideas yeah definitely i think you kind of nailed the whole idea of like entrepreneurial spirit or having that kind of ownership to bring out these new ideas and kind of improve the whole company by bringing those in yeah okay so what tips would you give to a person who would currently be thinking about perhaps moving to the States and, and applying for a job in Silicon Valley through Startup Lifers? So first of all, before applying for the job, go check out all of the positions that you can, all of the companies that can be interesting to you. Look at what their requirements are, uh, what they are, read their websites, look at what challenges they are facing and so on and see how you can apply your skills in for those challenges and write the CV accordingly. Then once you get there, let's keep all the interviews. We probably talked about it and there is a lot of material on how to prepare for uh, for coding interviews. But once you get to the Valley or San Francisco, make sure to go network, to talk to people, to hang out with the co-workers if possible, to go on the meetups, workshops, social events, hobby groups, whatever you can find, and uh, see how how it works outside of that little bubble. Because it's pretty easy to get stuck with uh, routines. There might be a lot of tasks in the startup, and you would feel like you have to accomplish all of them immediately but the truth is there is a lot going on and it won't be necessarily available to you if you don't try even if the company is telling that they will be arranging for you some happy hours or some events they might not necessarily have time for that even if they want to so it's it's up to you to make it happen uh the Second one is get out of San Francisco and the Bay Area once in a while. The nature is beautiful. Again, it's it's a great way to of recreation in general, and maybe also going there with friends would uh, bring a lot to the experience. A small advice that you might not necessarily hear from everyone: as soon as you arrive, try to get the credit card. They usually give it after a month or two in any bank. This is something that in Finland you don't need for anything. Everyone is used to living with debit cards, but in States you have to have this credit score and it's accumulating starting from the point where you get the credit card. 
So just get it for whatever small amount you can and uh, spend it up to the 30% that they recommend to just get a good credit score. With that, you can get an apartment. If you need to change it, you can get a loan for a car if you need it and so on. And it's generally a good thing to have. Yeah, that's a really good and concrete practical tip for a person moving moving to the States to bear in mind. And I definitely agree with you about the networking and going out there to meet people in meetups and workshops um, because there are just so many things going on. Uh, I was actually lucky to be in a position where I was kind of I was managing our developer community, so it was also my job to go to these hackathons and and meetups, and and that's definitely one of the best things about Silicon Valley and San Francisco in general, that there is just so much going on all the time. So uh, one final question for you, Kate. Uh, Once this 2020 situation is over do you envision going back to work to san francisco well honestly right now i have a really nice job here so it's hard to tell but probably at some point yeah i really like that place i still have a lot of friends with whom we talk daily and so on Uh, So I think once it gets a little bit better, both uh, with the virus situation and the political situation, I definitely would go there as often as I can. Yeah, and maybe it's like how it is for me that it's really nice to keep keep the contact there and and go visit once in a while and also remind uh, ourselves of the... um, all the interesting people and the ideas that are getting born there and and at least for me, for now, I will get it through just visiting every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, likewise. Hopefully, hope to go as soon as, as I can. <laughs> yeah, let's see how that goes. That's it for Leap. Thank you for listening and thank you, Kate, for joining us this time. If you are interested in applying for a startup job, go to startupplyfirst.org and check out the open positions or simply get in touch with the team. Until next time.